Whoop. That was just to wake you up. <laughs> that was a beautiful piece he was playing there at the end. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this day that we celebrate Pentecost. I'm pleased to be worshiping with you, whether you're here in person or watching online. Now, we always share the Lord's Supper on Pentecost, so I'm using this opportunity to remind our online viewers that this would be a good time for you to find a piece of bread or a cracker and some juice so that when we celebrate the sacrament of communion a little bit later in the service, you will be prepared to take it with us. As for the people who are here in person, we always use gluten-free bread and grape juice as our communion elements. Now, I guess we're not doing birthday blessings today because Jack isn't here. But on behalf of Woodlawn, I'd like to extend Christian condolences to Josie Obasesson and family on the death of Josie's sister. Now, Josie is in our choir. He's not here today. But his uh, younger sister died recently, Christiana. So we hold you in our hearts with prayer, Josie. Being a long weekend, uh, as far as I know, there is no fellowship today after church. Now, does anyone else have a short announcement they would like to make? Anyone? No? Okay, awesome. So, to show we honor, acknowledge, and wish to nurture right relations with our indigenous people, we will say our statement of reconciliation. As we gather in this place, we remember with gratitude that we live and worship on lands that are by law, the unceded territories of the Mi'kmaq. May we live with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with its people. Please stand as you are able for our call to worship. Come, Holy Spirit. In the name of God, the of life. Come, Holy Spirit. Our advocate and our counselor. Come, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Our opening hymn is Voices United, number 207, Spirit of God Unleashed on Earth. seated.
The light of Christ is a gift to the world by the power of the Holy Spirit, a light that shines within us and around us to draw us closer to God and lead us to eternal life. We light the Christ candle to remind us of the gift of Christ's presence in this wondrous way. Batteries, anyone? Okay. Back up. Let us take a moment to reflect in sacred silence. Loving God, we thank you for Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world, as well as your Holy Spirit, voice of wisdom within us. Christ in us leads to life in all its fullness, both here and now and into eternity. May your voice of wisdom open our hearts and minds to the light of your truth in our worship today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Are there any children or young at heart that would like to come up here? Yes. Well, you know what? I think I'll just move this little stool out. No, it's fine. I was going to try to sit on the step, but I'm not sure I can make it back up. Okay. <laughs> this is, you really have to get used to this stuff. Okay, um, welcome. So wonderful to see you all. <laughs> On a long weekend, too. Okay, so I have here some symbols of the Holy Spirit, because this is Holy Spirit Day, right? And one of the symbols is when Jesus was baptized. Do you remember? When Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came down and lit on Jesus' shoulder. What do you think it was? What do you think it was? A dove. That's right. So the descending dove is what I call it. And this is one of those, those uh, symbols of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now... On Pentecost, and that was a Jewish celebration that they called Pentecost, and it was um, in Jerusalem, and it was a big festival, lots of people from many different countries attending. So, let's see if I can put that away. Oh. Anyways, um, there was another form of the Holy Spirit that came to all the disciples when they were in this house in the upper room. Does anybody know what what it would be? That the Spirit came in what form, Maisie? It makes a sound like this. (laughs) Yes. And so try to feel it. Can you feel the wind? Can you feel the breeze? 
Only it was a big rush of wind, right? <laughs> Blowing your hair back kind of wind. Yeah. So that's one, another form of the Holy Spirit. And then, and then what do you think? Do you have any idea? The other, what happened? Maisie? Fire. Fire, good for you. Somebody's been paying attention at Sunday school or listening to their parents. Okay, so the fire, and the fire is what color? Red. Red, that's right. That's right. So I would like you, is there anybody that come, can come and take some of these little tongues of flame and hand them out? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. If you need more, I'll just throw them at you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have red. Now that's the color for Pentecost, right? And do you know what it means, red? Yeah, so hot, warmth, uh, like a tongue of fire. But it also symbolizes uh, spirit, Holy Spirit, energy, lots of energy, passion. You really have a passion for something. Power, courage, strength, determination. Yeah, but you know what happened? When the Holy Spirit came after the wind, these little tongues of fire, put it up in front of your face like this. Yeah, it was sort of dancing in front of uh, the disciples and all the people that were waiting for this gift from God that Jesus said would come. And it was a little flame dancing in front of their face. And you know what? Eventually, I think it just probably, if I had tape there, I would have had it stuck to your foreheads, but it, would, it went right into them. The Holy Spirit then Oh, yours is, yours is sticking up anyway. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that's the Holy Spirit, okay, in a little tongue of fire. Now, Jesus said that John the Baptist, who baptized him with water, um, and, Je and Jesus' disciples saw this, well, not long after Jesus was taken up to heaven, that ascension in that cloud, he said that they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And that was like 10 days later. So since we can't use fire to baptize people, that wouldn't work very well, would it? Uh, we use water as the symbol for baptism, okay? That, and also Jesus was baptized with water, right? But we also use words that call the Holy Spirit uh, to the person being baptized, okay? So being baptized with the Holy Spirit uh, means that the Spirit lives in us, with our soul inside of us, okay? So it's Christ's Spirit, or Jesus' Spirit, that's giving us comfort when we need it, courage, strength, and guidance, okay? So Jesus Christ is always with us through the good times and the not-so-good times. And because Jesus sent his Holy Spirit to us, it's the Spirit's power and energy um, and, and sent it to his disciples, guess what? They were full of energy. So they wanted to spread the news all around and say, yes, Jesus lives and, uh, and lives in me, right? And the other thing about Holy Spirit, this is one of the important things, because the Holy Spirit helps us to understand things about Jesus, about his love of his life and his, his life of living a life of love and forgiveness and helping others. And then he died for us and was raised to new life and ascended, right? And that was so that we could be the same with Jesus when it's our time to go to heaven to be with Jesus. We will be there and not separated from God. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, the Holy Spirit brought power and energy into Jesus' followers so they could start the Christian church. In other words, Pentecost is the birthday of the church. And because that's, they wanted to gather and worship God together and spread the good news of Jesus, and they started churches in houses, and then they got bigger and bigger until we have a place like this to worship. 
So you know what? We're going to sing, if Gus is okay with this, we're going to sing happy birthday, but here are the words, okay? It's happy birthday to church, <clears throat> happy birthday to church, happy birthday, dear church, happy birthday to church, okay? Happy birthday to Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, so let's pray just before we do your children's hymn. Let's pray together. So repeat after me, okay? Dear God, Dear God. Thank, you for Jesus, thank you for Jesus, who sent his Holy Spirit, Spirit to live in us, so we would know the way to live as your church. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. Thank you. All right, time to sing.
Prior to our reading for today, Jesus spoke with his 11 disciples before ascending to heaven. Just before he was lifted up in a cloud, he told his disciples that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit came upon them, and then they would be witnesses to his life, death, resurrection, and ascension, not only in Jerusalem, but in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After they watched Jesus ascend, they returned to Jerusalem, to the upper room where they were staying, and they spent hours over many days praying to God. Jesus' mother Mary and other women were also among them. After a time, they decided to choose a 12th disciple to replace Judas, the one who had betrayed Jesus. Two men who had accompanied Jesus from his baptism in the Jordan River by John the Baptist right up to Jesus' ascension were chosen and the lots were drawn. Matthias became the 12th disciple. 10 days after Jesus' ascension, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. Our reading begins at this point. I'm reading from the book of Acts, chapter two, verses one to 21, and it is called the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, They were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. May God bless this reading to fill our hearts with understanding. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation that comes from all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Can you imagine what it would have been like when the rush of the wind and the tongues of fire came? Take a moment and imagine yourself in the upper room 
with the 12 disciples, along with Jesus' mother and several other women who had closely followed him. All of a sudden, you hear and feel a great rush of wind. It's probably blowing in your face. And if you have long hair, it's blowing out behind you. That's how strong it was. Then you see a little tongue of red fire appear and dance right before your eyes. Imagine it. Suddenly, the tongue of fire moves toward your face and disappears into your forehead. You can see that's what happened to those around you. Now, you physically have the Holy Spirit in you. You feel its power, its energy, and you're excited. You want to shout it out to the world that Jesus is amazing. Jesus lives, and Jesus' Holy Spirit lives in me and in you. That's the excitement felt by those first disciples and followers of Jesus, the ones who started the Christian church, which over time became the universal Christian church. Christian churches around the world over the centuries. Though different denominations or no denomination, whether Protestant or Catholic, all stem from that first Pentecost gathering in the upper room with the 12 disciples, Jesus' mother, Mary, and several other women. They were the first to experience the power of the Holy Spirit in them. And there were others outside that house who heard the commotion because we know it was a big festival time there were thousands and thousands of people from different countries who had come to Jerusalem for the festival. It was a Pentecost festival. Shavuot is what it was in the Jewish name. Anyways, they were the first to experience this power. And it made such a commotion that people outside the house were impacted because all of a sudden they heard these different languages from each nation that was there being spoken by these people in this house. And the Holy Spirit made sure everyone there, even though they were from different nations, could understand the message of God's deeds of power that God wanted them to hear. Like, and I read this further in the book of Acts, like the sending of Jesus, the raising of Jesus, and that God's purpose through all of this was the salvation of all people. God loves us so much that God wanted to make sure that all people would be saved, would not be separated from him, and in the next life, would be with God and with Jesus. So God knew and planned that this particular day would be the birth of the church that would spread the good news of Jesus Christ around the world. As theologian Kristen Emery Saldine says in my Feasting on the Word commentary, in Acts, the work of the Holy Spirit is to call individuals into community as the body of Christ. I'll just say it one more time. In Acts, the book of Acts, the work of the Holy Spirit is to call individuals into community, like we are here, as the body of Christ. She also points out that Pentecost is not meant to be a benchmark of what the church should look like on any given Sunday. Rather, it seeks to communicate how important the church is and how inseparable it is from Christ. Let me just repeat that last part. It's, it's 
seeks to communicate how important the church is and how inseparable it is from Christ. You see, the church teaches us about the Christian faith, about Jesus' life, everything he did in his life, all the miracles, all the wonderful healing, all the forgiveness that was offered. And he wanted peace and justice to reign. So it, talked, it teaches us about Jesus' life and then his death on the cross, his being raised to new life by God, the resurrection, and then his ascension into heaven. So he's back with God where he came from. And these are all words found in scripture that tell us about the eyewitness accounts we need, we need to know about in order to believe. Pentecost gives us our identity and our purpose. Each year on Pentecost, as Kristen Saldine points out, we are reminded of who we are as a church, what we proclaim, and the source of that proclamation. It is a message to the church from the church, passed down through the millennia to each generation. That's amazing, isn't it? It's a message to the church from the church passed down through the millennia to each generation. You know, people today might get a little tired of hearing the story of Pentecost. We hear about it every single year, but that's the whole point. If we didn't, we'd forget about the excitement and the enthusiasm of those first believers, about the Holy Spirit indwelling Jesus' followers, us too, in order to inspire them to spread the good news of Jesus. I don't want people to ever forget. I want people to know that Jesus is real and his Holy Spirit is welcome to live in each of us who come to know and love him. That Jesus offers each of us, through repentance, full forgiveness. The church, through the power of the Holy Spirit, has been given the authority to proclaim the gospel of the risen Lord. And whether we're timid or not so timid, each one of us has the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our souls, in our minds. And we can be bold, like Peter, the one who denied Jesus before his crucifixion, suddenly became a bold preacher on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit empowered him, and he spoke the words God put in his mind. He witnessed to a crowd exactly what God wanted him to say. A bit further on in the chapter, after Peter speaks with conviction about Jesus, his death, and their eyewitness accounts of seeing and speaking with Jesus after his resurrection, he tells the crowd that has gathered that they need to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ so that their sins may be forgiven. And then they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amazingly, 3,000 people were baptized that day. That's how quickly the message of God's love through Jesus' Holy Spirit began to spread. You know, I get excited when we baptize people today. Just last month, five beautiful people were baptized here at Woodlawn. It's a far cry from 3,000, but it's still positive. It means we're still moving forward. So let's continue to preach the word, that's with a capital W, that Jesus lives and wants to live in each of us so that we can be empowered to work for justice and peace and spread God's love to the world. 
Wherever you see that happening, God's spirit is at work. It means people are in the spirit, and the spirit is in them. That's good news. In the church year, we've gone from ashes on Ash Wednesday to fire on Pentecost. So let's stick with the fire. Let's fire up so we can be the church that spreads the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's get in the spirit and get moving. Thanks be to God. Amen. When people of faith work together in mission and ministry, open to the Holy Spirit's guidance, needs are met and God is glorified. Thank you to everyone who contributes to the life and work of Woodlawn United Church. May God accept all the gifts that we graciously offer through our time, talents, and treasure at Woodlawn United Church. The offering will now be received and blessed. Let us pray. Gracious God, giver of all good gifts, we thank you for your Holy Spirit's power and wisdom that guides us to be the hands and feet of Christ in this world. With our focus on Jesus, teacher and model for compassion and generosity, we thank you for the opportunities to help others. May your people and the gifts they offer bring your love and caring to the world. We ask for your blessing on the givers and their gifts. And may the sharing of these gifts bless others as we continue to serve faithfully in the name of Jesus. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen and ascended Lord, who sent the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost to grace our lives. Amen. And now will you please join me in saying our statement of faith, a new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
May the peace of Christ be with you. Here on the day of Pentecost, in the Spirit's power, we participate in a sacred story. We remember the self-giving love of God made known in the journey of Jesus to the cross while celebrating the feast of the resurrection. All who welcome Christ Jesus find a welcome at this table. He who welcomes us also reminds us that when we gather, we must prepare ourselves for the giving, open to a life-renewing covenant of grace. Let us turn again to the newness of life that comes from God. Loving and caring God, all that we are is open to you. Look not, uh, look not upon our brokenness, but upon our faith. By your spirit, crack open the barriers which we erect against your love. Fill our lives with a holy passion and nurture the growth of our body, mind, and soul so that we come glad to this celebration. When our prayers are left unspoken and our hearts become hardened to the gift of love, Embrace us with the assurance of your mercy. When life's abrasive pressures numb us and we find it hard to care for others, tell us again about your sacred energy that creates and redeems. Tell us the story of a rainbow, an exodus people, a cradle, a cross, and a Pentecost people when we are consumed by our own needs, when we turn from our neighbors in need, lure us on to be faithful. For if one suffers, we all suffer. If one flourishes, we all rejoice. O oh God, give healing to our brokenness, new love where we have grown cynical, forgiveness where we have wounded. God of hope, where we are the prisoners of ourselves, give us the unimaginable promise of an empty tomb. Give us the joy and freedom of your spirit. God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, God of our parents and children, we bless you. Truly, you are the dwelling place of every generation. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Lord of life, hear our thanks for this meal you share with your church throughout the world. Through it, you call us to new and different living with a faith revealed in your walking beside us 
and before us in Jesus of Nazareth, crucified and risen, the one who gives the light of hope you have for each of us to bring blessing and promise to the world. At this table, Jesus prepared for us, you call us to celebrate how our lives intersect with your presence. With a piece of bread and a small cup, we are reminded that beyond our physical needs, we require the bread of mercy and the cup of life that comes from you. In them, you offer us healing and hope. We are given the promise of future grace, here and now. By your Holy Spirit, O oh God, from the beginning, you risked having a relationship with humans and the whole of creation. Your voice spoke, let there be light, as you established order out of chaos and fashioned a people made in your image. You brought this light of faith in covenants of love and justice with your people Israel, a faith proclaimed through the strength of your prophets. As members of your church, we celebrate this faith in Jesus Christ and how the shape of your love became visible through his passion and self-giving love. Beginning with a humble birth in Bethlehem, the steps he took on this earth graced lives with healing and hope. He was betrayed by friends, rejected by all. In humility, obedience, and trust, he gave himself unto suffering and death on a cross. Yet he rose again, revealing a Holy Spirit that overcomes division and even death, to bring life for all through justice, mercy, patience, and love. At this table, we remember now how on the night of his betrayal, as Jesus sat at the table and broke bread with his friends, he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you and how after they had eaten, he took the cup and said, this is my life poured out for you. In memory and with hope, with thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup, proclaiming the mystery of faith. Christ is done. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O oh God, we remember those with whom you would have us share your feast. We pray for all who are in sorrow or in pain, ill or alone, those who live in shame, who live with fear, oppression, or hunger, for those caught in circles of violence or poverty, for all whom the world counts as last and least. On this Pentecost, we pray for the church, for the humility to admit mistakes, the grace to learn from them, and the faith to rise again. We pray for those who have gathered over the ages, moved by the same spirit that moved the disciples so long ago. We pray for our own congregation of Woodlawn. Hear us as we pray for nations, as they strive for peace and justice, for leaders and governments, for our human community and the care of creation. Hear our prayers too deep for words. God of all power, send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that they may be for us the life of Christ a life that we share as a thankful people united in his body. We share one loaf and one cup and exist as the one body of Christ, the church. We praise you, eternal God, through Christ, your word made flesh in the holy and life-giving spirit, joining our voices in the prayer of Jesus as we say together, our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. The life of Christ poured out for you. Thanks be to God. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray together. Loving God, it is through your goodness we have received these gifts at your table. Bread that was once scattered as grain, gathered together and baked into a loaf. Drink that was once grapes grown on a hillside, gathered together and pressed into juice. You have taken the ordinary and given it new meaning. Now you have gathered us at your table and called us to life anew. May people see alive in us your life and hope, and may we see this life in others. Amen. And please stand as you are able to sing our final hymn. It's from More Voices 150, Spirit God Be Our Breath. May God bless and keep us, reminding us to live in the Spirit and let the Spirit live in us as we continue to be the hands and feet of Christ in this world. And may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. We heard fellowship was off, and to quote Thor, I say thee nay. Lisa has put on the tea and coffee. I spread some cookies. We hope to see you downstairs and join in fellowship. <laughs>